What is going on everybody? It's 3D Engineering here and this video will cover simulation of flow in an aerospike rocket nozzle. So before I actually show you guys how to perform the CFD, I'll first talk about how an aerospike nozzle actually works in brief. I'll be covering a video in more detail at a future time on how an aerospike nozzle works but this video will be like a little explanation first. So you guys know that in a typical rocket nozzle there can be something called under expansion it happens at a very high altitude when the exit pressure of your rocket nozzle is, does not exceed the atmospheric pressure. The way you compensate for this altitude is by using an aerospike nozzle. So an aerospike nozzle has a shaped reverse like that, as you can see in the picture. And the idea is to keep the airflow constrained to just outside the engine and not allow it to expand too much. This is accomplished from expansion waves as the flow is expanding from a thin area into a larger area section. This expansion wave will accelerate the flow and create a net force downward. And that is why the plume will be compressed and you will have a lot more efficient performance at that altitude. So now let's go into CFD. My design problem can be seen over here. I have a typical aerospike nozzle with your given pressure, temperature, as well as chamber pressure. You also have the pressure outside just to be sure that it's specified so we know what altitude the, the rocket is flying at. And then we can simply create our geometry here. And in our geometry, it is a very important fact to make sure that the flow at the entry of my uh, nozzle end, it has to be supersonic since the flow needs to expand and create a uh, Panel mirror expansion waves. So you can see my geometry over here. It is simply a two dimensional geometry. It has an inlet, a midsection, and an exit, which is slightly bigger than the midsection. And this converging diverging nozzle will create a supersonic flow, which will be at the entry of the aerospike nozzle. And then the aerospike nozzle will simply expand the flow further and create our phenomenon. So now let's jump into ANSYS and let's import the geometry in there. So in ANSYS, you can simply set your geometry to two-dimensional and then import it. You can then simply hit generate to import it. And now the idea is to create a structured mesh. As I explained in my videos previously that it is recommended to have a structured mesh if your geometry is not too complicated in order to release accurate results. And from a structured mesh, you can, you can then add sizing. I have a demonstration of that over here. I'm simply splitting my domain up first into force face split feature. And then from that, I can then add sizing to optimize my mesh and make it more accurate. So you can see that I'm adding bias because I want to thicken the mesh near the boundary layer or near any geometry of interest. I'm doing this a couple of times to make sure that the mesh is accurate and to ensure that the elements are not too skewed. So this will depend on your geometry. You can just play around with it to see what happens. And then when your geometry is done, you can simply bring it to meshing. So when you're in meshing now, you can then actually apply your mesh, right? So first let's add a structured mesh. You're going to tools and face meshing and select each face over there. When you're done that, you can then go into your mesh settings and, the change, and change the values over there. So have stuff like set the relevance center, center to fine, go to proximity and curvature. You want to make sure that is well optimized for your simulation. And at my size, my maximum size is eight millimeters where you can change this as what you want to do. So when you're done your mesh, you can click generate and see how your mesh looks. So when my mesh has been completed, I can then go into setup and go into parallel computing because I want to use two cores. And once I'm there, I can then set my uh, simulation parameters. So I have energy set to on because the temperature will be changing since the flow is highly compressible. You will set viscosity to on because I'll be using viscosity in my model. I'll be using the realizable K epsilon turbulence model since it's quite accurate for this type kind of flow. I'll be using my viscosity to Sutherland and I can then go into my uh, gas properties and change the density to ideal gas and viscosity to Sutherland. Once I'm there, then I can go into my uh, boundary conditions and change my values over there. 
I have my far field set to wall and my inlet set to my pressure inlet to be the value as specified in the design problem. Temperature is also given over here. When it comes to my far field, I started to wall because I'll be assuming that it's in a wind tunnel testing. My outlet on the opposite side can be set to a pressure outlet. So make sure you do that. And, your, and the pressure over there will be your ambient pressure as specified in the problem. So it's about 50 kPa in this case. And I'll be using axis of symmetry because my axis will be in the middle. So to make sure you do that. And if you forgot, go into your mesh settings and make it into axis symmetry. So when I've done that, I can then go into my reference values and then click the values over there. So I have my set to my initialization as my pressure inlet because that will be my initial condition on the nozzle entry. And then we can run my simulation over here. Make sure it's all second order upwind. Make sure that your monitors are there if you wish to have that, but you need to have it. You can go into check case and run your simulation over there. So keep in mind for this type of nozzle simulation, similar to my previous video, it's going to take a while to solve. So make sure that your simulation is quite well optimized. And you have to be patient over here because it's going to take a lot of iterations to converge. You can see my converging graph over there. It, it took a while. It took about 2000 plus iterations to converge since the flow is compressible and there'll be shock waves and all that kind of stuff forming. So that's that. So when I'm done my simulation, when you're done, you can go to your, your CFD post and click on results. I've done, I've shown this many times in my previous videos. So here I have my Mach number simply plotted. You can see in my Mach number that the flow is first converging into a converging nozzle and then expanding. And then once it hits the air spike entry, it then expands further. Since the air spike nozzle is meant to provide expansion to create more force and to optimize the efficiency of a nozzle performance over a high range of pressure. So you can see my oblique shocks performing over there. If I take a closer look at my Mach number, you can see the shocks in more detail. It is expanding all the entire thing, which is good. And you can see like a little, little stagnation region over there, which means that my simulation is accurate since obviously the pressure there will be at low speed. If I go into my pressure plot, it will be similar. And the idea is to have the pressure inversely proportional to velocity as always, so you can see it over there. My CFD results can be seen here. They're fairly accurate since my mesh was accurate. And that's all for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned something new and answers. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned for a new video on how an aerospike nozzle works. Take care. Bye-bye.